What we are talking about today is measuring photo conductivity on things like that. Um, I think it's a very basic method. It is, uh, it is done with an instrument like that. It's a so-called heat flow meter. Um, there's, there are some, some standards in the industry. Uh, this is the ASTM C518, uh, which tells you how to build an instrument and how to measure the photo conductivity with the so-called steady state method. Uh, you have a sample like this. You have a hot plate and a cold plate. Uh, you insert it into an uh, instrument which can do that. You have a gradient, you build up a gradient through the material. You have, for example, 20 degrees C here, 10 de uh, 0 degrees C there. You get a mean temperature of something around uh, 10 degrees C. Uh, and then you create a stable heat flow through the material. And by measuring the heat flow, you can calculate from the furious law the thermal conductivity of the material. You will have a uh, material like this. You create a temperature gradient to the material and from that gradient you can calculate your thermal conductivity. Um, this method is always calibrated, so it is always uh, traceable to an international uh, thermal conductivity standard. This is one of those standards, this is a NIST 4050D. This is a national recognized thermal conductivity standard. Um, and all the measurements we do are 100% traceable to that international reference standard. So, uh, if you want to do or to run a measurement, you have to pay attention on uh, the environmental situation. Uh, in this condition, like we have it today, I think it's good to measure thermal conductivity. So, what you can do in this instrument, it is very nicely insulated, it has a, a door to close and it has the possibility to add some purge gas, to add some dry gas into the instrument that you can have a dry condition inside of the instrument during the measurement, which uh, makes uh, the world much more easier. Okay, let's start and let's demonstrate how easy it is. We take a sample like this, every one of you is used to, to have such samples. You insert it into the instrument, you close the stack. Two, two finger safety. Yeah, very important. Two finger safety. <laughs> you close the door. Uh, if we have an instrument like this, we need to, um, to add some information on the, uh, on the software. First, I'd like to explain how the software works. You have the possibility to create so-called user methods. Uh, you can create for every kind of foam a special method or for any kind of operator a special method. And here I created a method called Foam Expo. Uh, it comes up with uh, some basic information, uh, some basic input data, and then I, I need to add the sample ID and then I need to create a temperature program. Normally, uh, in the ASTM C518, you measure the thermal conductivity uh, at, I guess, 23 or 24 degrees, 75 Fahrenheit, um, but you can measure also on certain temperatures. You can measure 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 in one run. Okay, it's very easy, you can, you can uh, you can add here your mean temperature and the delta temperature, which is the gradient temperature. It is 20 degrees C here in the moment. You can add another temperature point, 20 degrees C, and another temperature point, 30 degrees C. Okay, so we program three temperature points. Instrument can go from minus 20 up to 90 degrees C. Um, and you can measure up to 10 temperature points in one single run. And after that, you can press start and the instrument is running. The big graph here on the left side, um, it tells you the temperature, uh, the mean temperature, and the temperature of the upper and the lower plate. And here you see 
the heat flow versus time and uh, the heat flow meter output versus time. And now we create um, the gradient through the sample and this curve on the, on the left side tells you when the thermal transport, the, 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 the heat flow to the material is stable. We see that it will change over time. There are a lot of crazy things are, uh, ongoing in this instrument now. And if they are stable, and stable for a long, long time, then we take the point, take the measurement point. Um, a normal measurement on a foam takes something between half an hour and one and a half hour, something like that. Um, it depends on it depends on your parameters that you choose. Um, if we have a room like this, we can we can have the instrument stable at 20 degrees C gradient and a mean temperature of 20 degrees C uh, and exchange only the sample. And as long as you measure this particular one temperature point, the instrument can stay in this situation um, and a measurement can measurement time can be optimized. Okay, you see what the instrument is doing now. We are started from a from a mean temperature of 24 degrees C and it will go down to uh, a mean temperature of 10 degrees C with a Kelvin with a, a gradient of 20 and now you see the temperature of the blades are dropping and here you see the heat flow signals of the heat flow meters inside of the blades and till this condition is stable um, you need to wait after the stabilization of the heat flow meters we can take the measurement point.